Well, thanks so much for joining um, with me here as we um, look at systematic theology. You know, one of the things that um, I, I feel as Christians that we, we need to do is to have a really good foundation of what we believe and why. And as someone who studied theology and taught theology at the academic level, I felt like it would be really good for us because um, many of you have access to phones and um, iPads and all kinds of different media to to learn. And I know many Christians really do want to learn. And, and so done this class to help you understand a little bit more about theology proper. And I'd like to go ahead and just give you some um, upfront introductory um, sort of comments uh, on this class. And then uh, and then we'll get into the uh, the class itself. First of all, my goal in this class, and let me go ahead here and write this out. My goal is, first of all, to expose you to some ideas and thoughts that maybe you've never been exposed to. I mean, you know, obviously many of us go to church and we, we listen to um, the pastor we, we listen to maybe some podcasts or maybe we read some books. And some of us are maybe um, less. Many Christians go to church and listen to a sermon and they don't do a whole lot more with their Christianity um, during the week. And maybe you found yourself um, wanting a little bit more and that's why you're here. Or maybe you go to the church that I pastor and you want to learn a little bit more. Or maybe somebody sent this to you. But what I want to do as your professor in this class is I want to help expose you to some ideas and some thoughts that maybe you've never been exposed to. And part of that is because I believe that one of the things that we Christians are called to do is to love the Lord with our mind. Now, um, I would readily concede that there's a lot of people that are more intellectual in their Christianity, and um, sometimes they're not as relational as um, they should be. At the end of the day, God wants to have a relationship with you and me. But I do believe he wants us to use our mind. And by exposing people to these these new ideas um what what'll what'll happen is you'll have to struggle through some things and that's a good thing and i I want you to i want you to have new ideas i want to open up new doorways new vistas um that, that you can sort of start to realize hey there's a there's a large um part of understanding who god is there's a large part of what's going on and in this class i want to expose you to the idea of god and who god is um, I want to talk about creation, you know, and that's a, a, a big topic today. And then I want to talk about our salvation. And, and within those are large, large categories. And so we're going to take those on in this class. And I'm hoping that what you will do is by being exposed, it will help everybody who listens to this to be more aware that there are Christians that are in different um, denominations, live in different parts of the world, um, Christians that love God just like you and me, that you know, get down on their knees and pray and have um, differing ideas. And one of the things that we want to do is by exposing these ideas, and this is important, is that we're going to be able to see two really important things um, with this sort of exposure is some things are what I call um, in the stadium. If you could imagine sort of a large stadium and, um, you know, within that stadium, we would consider everybody to be a Christian. Um, somebody may be down on the field playing. Somebody may be on the top row of the stadium. But we we feel like anybody in that stadium is a Christian. I want to be able to expose you to what I call stadium views, where you know there's all kinds of different people in that stadium with different views, but it's within the stadium. And then I also want to um, expose you to what I call non-stadium views. And what I mean by that is, is the views that go outside of the bounds of what we would consider to be traditional Christianity. There, there's an orthodoxy, um, and then there is a non-orthodoxy, or oftentimes it's called heretical views. And I want to make sure that we're exposed to the larger stadium views, and then also exposed to what we would consider to be things that would be non-stadium. For, for instance, a, a non-stadium view would be if somebody says that Jesus is not God, well, Christianity sort of hinges on that. If, Christ, if, if Jesus didn't rise from the dead, um, then Christianity sort of falls. And Paul says that in 1 Corinthians 15. He says if Jesus didn't raise from the dead, then our whole faith is futile and everything is in vain. And so I want to try to expose that. Um, I also want you 
to know what you believe. Um, part of exposure um, gets us to think. And as we think, what we're able to do is we're, we're able to start to process, what do I believe? Because see, as you're exposed to ideas, you're going to start realizing, I didn't know that. Or wow, maybe that's a better way to look at this. And the only way to do that is to have exposure to ideas. My second goal in this class, and this is a very important part of what we're doing here. Let me clear all this off here. Um, I want to make sure that you have a good education. And I need to spend a moment talking about this idea of education. Um, I want you to be able to know the different theological camps. There are differing opinions on all kinds of things. There's differing opinions on foreknowledge, uh, predestination, the return of the Lord, um, just a, a mul baptism. You know, should we immerse? Should we uh, baptize kids? I mean, there's, a, there's all kinds of things that Christians have positions on. I want you to know them. Why do I want you to know them? Because it helps you to start to process through what's true and not true. And my goal is never to indoctrinate people in classes like this. I mean, I have my own personal opinions. Um, and, and I think that my opinions are right because I've studied and, um, and taken time. But what I know as an educator is that if I tell you my opinion, a lot of people go, well, then, okay, that must be the, the right way. And I don't want to do that. I want you to have to sort through these issues. I want you to struggle through these issues. It will help your faith. It will grow your relationship with God. The struggle is real, but the struggle is good. I'm not interested in indoctrinating you. I am interested in getting you to learn. I want you to learn some things. Um, and to learn, we're going to have to be um, familiar and exposed to the different ideas. And we're going to have to have some idea in our mind that it needs to be open to listen and to learn and to, and to struggle. One of the easiest things to do as Christians is to sort of box ourselves in to our own little world and then reject everything else. Um, I'm not asking you to be so open-minded that you somehow decide that Jesus isn't God or that he didn't raise from the dead. That's not the open-mindedness I'm talking about. I'm saying that I think that as Christians, we need to be willing to listen um, and, and realize that there are so many people that have come before us and there's so many people in this world that maybe don't see it exactly the way that we do. And to understand where they're coming from, honestly, will either help what we already believe or it will challenge what we already believe. Um, I think that an educated Christian, or what I would call an educated theologian, has the most promise for charity. And, and that's what I have always wanted to create in my systematic theology classes, is Christians who are charitable in their theology. I'm not talking about being charitable to things that are non-stadium issues. We do need to be able to call those out and we need to know what they are. But to Christians that are within the stadium, we need to learn that, hey, you know what? It's okay to disagree. Um, we, we don't need to be so rigid, so dogmatic, um, closed-handed. And, and, and oftentimes in, in theology, that's exactly what it does. I know in my own personal life as I pursued different degrees and different uh, um, theological training, one of the things that in the short term, um, I became more rigid. I, I became more, this has to be the system. And, and the more I read and the more I studied and the more I interacted with other people, the more I realized that, wow, there are people that really do have differing opinions than me. And, and, and they're getting it because they really genuinely love God and they believe scripture is inspired. And, and understanding these things are important. And that's part of education. It's okay that Christians can and will disagree on many issues. But an education will give all of us a broader understanding and an acceptance of, of others. And this idea of education, um, the, the, the word educate um, means to lead out. That's the root of this. And this idea of leading out um, goes all the way back to Plato's cave. And I don't know if you know Plato's cave or not, but it's in the Republic. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great part of the, the, the book, but in the cave, and, and I'm not an artist, so please don't, don't hold me to this. There are, there are people that are in a cave, and there is a cave wall, and they can only see the cave wall. They're actually chained um, into a chair, um, and they can only see what's in front of them. Well, behind them, there is this fire, 
and this fire illuminates the cave wall. And in illuminating the cave wall, what they do is they parade behind these people because they can't see it. They, they parade animals and other stuff. And then what happens here on the cave wall is there are shadows. And the shadows become uh, sort of the the image that people see. It's not the reality because the reality is back here behind them. There's a fire, but they see the shadows. And what's interesting is that part of the the um, the people that are there, they have decided that the people that are the smartest are, are the ones that can identify the shadows the quickest, even though the shadows are not reality. Um, well, Plato says, what would happen if one of these people who are chained up and only looking at the wall, what would happen if they were unchained? What would happen if they, you know, were all of a sudden removed from this world that they um, had adopted as reality? It's all they knew. They only knew shadows. Um, he says, well, first of all, when you unchain them from the uh, chair, um, their muscles would have atrophied. So they wouldn't be able to walk or wouldn't be able to, to get up because, I mean, they've been chained to a chair for, for their life. And so when they are on the ground, how do you get them from there out of the cave that they're in to let them realize that there's a whole nother world out there that they've just been living in a cave looking at shadows. But in their mind, that is the reality. Well, Plato says when you unchain that person, you're going to have to drag them out of the cave. <laughs> and so when you're dragging somebody out of the cave, that's the leading out here of education, leading people out of the cave, is you're leading them out. When they turn around, the first thing they're going to see is this fire. Well, their eyes are not accustomed to seeing anything but the wall and the shadows. And so what happens is, is they're, they're all of a sudden shutting their eyes because it's like, whoa, what's going on? And they're sort of being drug out of this cave as they go up the stairs. Their elbows are dragging, their legs are dragging, they're hitting stuff. And it's an uncomfortable experience. Well, eventually they get out of the cave and they realize that there's grass and trees and sky. I mean, it's like a whole nother world. And, and then the questions asked, will you go back in? You know, what happens when you take them back in and you strap them down to their chairs again? Well, they're going to say to everybody in those chairs, no, no, there's a whole nother world. There's, you don't understand it. Everybody in those chairs are going to say, you're crazy because this is the world that we know. That's the way education is. Education is getting us out of the cave. It's getting us to where we don't just look at the world the way that we looked at it. It's, it's being able to realize there is a whole nother world. And, and what happens when we truly do become educated, um, many people who still are living in that cave don't want to hear what we have to say. And, and that's a shame because we want to be people that love God with all of our hearts and all of our minds. And so education is super important. So I want to expose you to some things. I want to educate you in some areas. And I also want to make sure that you are equipped, that you are equipped um, as Christians to um, stay within the stadium. Um, the early church father, Irenaeus, said theology was like a mosaic with tiles. This came to be known, um, Irenaeus, um, Irenaeus um, said that the theology or, or the, the Christian faith um, was like a mosaic and it had tiles and how could we put it together? And he, he called um, what we call the rule of faith. This was his, uh, um, his, his deal here, the rule of, the rule of faith. He, he, he believed that there was a way to sort of systematize and put things together. And the church fathers agreed that the Bible could be read differently but what the rule of faith did is it sort of kept it from being misread to a fault. In other words, there was this ability here um, as, we, as we discuss scripture and theology and all of these things, that there's a way to sort of read this. And so Daniel Trier in his book, Introducing Theological Interpretation of Scripture, says, the rule of faith enabled the church to identify, preserve, and pass on a coherent doctrine of God in the face of competing accounts of Christian identity. So the early Christians 
the early church fathers, the the ones that struggled through a lot of the things and processed through a lot of the things like Trinity and you know the the canon of Scripture and all of these things. Um, they saw that having a good handle on the Christian faith provided a form of moral restraint against our human tendencies to pervert or twist the scriptures to our own selfish or self-interested ways. And what I want to do is I want to equip you to make sure in this class, not only are you exposed to, to differing understandings of Christianity, because we want you to understand that there are different ways that people look at certain things, doctrinal issues, um, to educate, to really drag you out of a cave. I mean, a good educator, a good teacher um, will irritate you from time to time. It, it, you're not getting a good education if you're not challenged and if every once in a while there's not some salt and some wounds. That's just a good education. People who are good teachers will make you stretch. They will, they will introduce things to you that really challenge you. But then I also want to be able to equip you. I want to equip you to make sure that we stay within the stadiums. I want to equip you with a theological rule of faith so that what I would call none of us end up in the gutter. Um, and I want you to be equipped to see the largeness of the theological stadium and not the smallness of it. Um, a lot of times when we do theology, we just sort of box God into a certain deal and we don't realize that other people see it a different way. So I think this class will be incredibly um, important to your development as a Christian, um, to potentially as a, as a minister, um, as a young theologian, I think this will help you immensely. But I do want to say this, and this is so important. I am not trying to get you to think my way. That is not the goal of what we're doing here. The goal of what we're doing here is to truly expose, educate, and equip you. But it's not to have you believe the way I believe. Um, I do believe that the things that I believe are right. The problem is I just don't know which ones are wrong. And I've changed my mind many times over the years. So I know that I'm constantly learning and constantly struggling through um, all of these things. But my goal is not to get you to think the way I am. In fact, my whole goal here is to give you the tools so that you can work out your own personal theology with God. And that is why we're doing this. And that's what this class is all about. Mm -hmm.